as mentioned earlier tonight, we did complete Adamsdale Well. That's up and running. Uh, the McEwen plant, uh, we were about 75% of the way through. We spent about $5.6 million on that plant so far. Uh, about $5.5 million was spent on the Adamsdale Well. Um, we are, however, currently meeting the DEP's permit of 20 parts per trillion. Uh, all of our wells, uh, McEwen included, uh, just because we had some changes in process over there while we're doing the work, is now all below 20 parts per trillion. We are keeping our kiosk uh, in place until McEwen is uh, done and accepted. Um, but right now, our water does meet the uh, state standard. However, uh, last month, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency came down with a final ruling on PFAS nationwide and where uh, Massachusetts, which we thought was being progressive at 20 parts per trillion, uh, the EPA is going down to four parts per trillion. It's a little different, uh, the types of uh, PFAS, uh, there's a number of different types of PFAS, so the way they add it up is different, uh, but none of it matters because all of our wells are over on the two main standards that they have, uh, PFOA and PFOS, if anyone wants to read about it. Um, so there's a five-year implementation period, so we will have to uh, begin work on both the Hillman well and the uh, Whiting Street well uh, within probably the next three years. We're, we're looking to probably start design next year and then uh, move into implementation of construction of those two sites to have them done by five years from April. Uh, one of the things added to PFAS, uh, we did, uh, Mr. Borg and I attended a summit a couple weeks ago uh, that Congressman Auchincloss uh, uh, was kind enough to put on. EPA was there, DEP, there was some uh, vendors there who are selling their wares on PFAS destroying. Don't get excited, it's not gonna be ready by the time we're done. Um, but there is a lot of push towards you know, getting more companies up and running. One of the problems we had with Adamsdale was there was exactly one source of carbon that we could purchase from. Yeah. And, you know, the several communities that were going for it were all going for the same type of materials that are only made by two different people. Uh, and that's sort of expanding now, so it's getting a little bit more uh, easy. And I'm sure as all the other 34 states that haven't done anything yet uh, start having to meet the requirement of the EPA, uh, They'll hopefully it'll start uh, generating more companies to do that work. Uh, what we did take out of that meeting was, um, you know, they are pushing forward infrastructure funding for uh, PFAS removal. We've done very well for ourselves. We at the beginning of this, we got a two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant from the state to study it. That went towards our design. We got one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a short term implementation, which got us the kiosk for the first year and a half. Uh, we received a uh, million dollars from Congressman Auchincloss towards the McEwen plant. Uh, we have also uh, worked with DEP to get 0% financing, which saves us uh, over a million dollars. And um, uh, we got some principal forgiveness. The DEP and EPA were saying that there may be added principal forgiveness um, as it moves along, and it may be retroactive to our project. So that was one of our concerns is going first, um, that we you know, might not be included. Uh, however, we did ask specifically about private well systems. As you all know, we have a private well system in town. They are under the same regulation. Uh, they also have PFAS at about the same levels as my Hillman well, somewhere between 10 and 15 parts per trillion on average, and they will be required to comply. And most of these uh, funding sources that are available to me are not available to them because they are a for-profit company.